You're going to do a little bit of comparison between them. We've got the Navionics uh, Sonar Chart Live on board today. We've got the lovely latest software update, free of charge, no expensive cards required or anything. Uh, the Genesis Live, four years ago, um, I was in Tulsa, Oklahoma with the lovely folks at Lawrence. They put me up for a week and, uh, and put up with me for a week. And um, we, this is what we discussed. And guys, four years later, here it is, free of charge. Go for it. I'm gonna show you how to use it. Let's set the unit up quickly. Guys, while I'm here, um, I'm not gonna, you see all this reflection that you're getting? We're gonna avoid that completely. Man, you guys, so many people send these pictures to me with these screenshots of these beautiful reflections and I can see their lovely shirts that they've got, their Hurley shirts and beautiful caps and really, and what a lovely new phone they got themselves. But I can't see a thing on the screen. So what I suggest you do is use the Wi-Fi connection to the unit and there's an app called Link. You're gonna need that. I'm gonna change over to that. Right, uh, there's the app down at the bottom. We're going to click on that, but first on the settings, let's make sure it's connected. Yes, there we go, under Wi-Fi. It's connected to the HDS9 Carbon. Um, <clears throat> right, then you're going to click on the little app. There's your link app there. And you can see we've got a little green connection. That means that that's live. The others will connect up later. The Gen 3 and the Leads and all that stuff will connect later. But let's just connect to this. We're going to connect on remote control. And now it's going to connect. <clears throat> okay, guys, as you can see, we are now connected and we can now record the screen. Um, the clarity on this should be excellent. So let's see how we go. Right. Um, first of all, sonar. The first thing that you, well, let's first do your, your page setup. I'd recommend using your top right that you see on the screen. I think that's a good choice. You want to see the chart and you want to see the sonar. So we're going to click on that. There it is there. And we also want to split the screen. So we're going to hit the power button. You see we've got this here. We can hit the power button. We're going to use this feature here. Where we can set the size. You see how it slides across there. We're going to put that there we're going to say save and there we go okay guys that's how you want to set it up when you go uh genesis live you want to see your sonar and you want to see a big section of your charts guys the important thing here the card if your your fish tech card whatever mapping card you are using is not inserted in the slot please i'm going to repeat that remove your your card before you start Genesis Live. Okay, and it's very important that you do that and I'll explain to you why. Okay, so then we're going to hit the Pages button and we're going to go to uh, Settings and we're going to go to Sonar and we're going to, under Installation, make sure that you've got the right transducer. In this case, you can see there's a TM150 there. Everything's fine. But guys, the dam level is down. At the moment, we are on Inanda Dam. Uh, the water level is down just shy of 21 feet. Um, this you can determine with a number of apps or if you've got a fish tech chart, the fish tech charts are always uh, calculated at the level of 100%. So just do a sub subtraction of your actual depth to your chart depth and that'll tell you what the offset is. Unfortunately, with the Lawrence units, we the maximum value like i want to put in 21 here it won't let me it's automatically going to give me the maximum maximum um value which is 16.5 which means i'm essentially four feet short of where i need to be if the dam was any deeper I mean, was any shallower now or was in a worse drought remember you're only limited to 16.5 feet but at least it's a constant and you could always sort of work it out but i recommend doing it so i've said okay uh 16.5 we're going to say okay we're going to save that and immediately you'll see our depth that was uh, uh 
a few feet there what was it uh, eight nine feet whatever it was is now we've added 16.5 to that and now we've got 23.7 feet where we are now so that is something you want to do now at this point you can insert your chart either the fish tech chart but guys keep this card away from your computers I'm going to talk about this a little bit later in the show uh, on Tuesday night but uh, please you must remember you you are responsible for this card anything happens to it it's an insurance claim so and it's an and if it can be a very expensive one if you haven't insured it for example and you've got the KZM combo which is 8,000 Rand guys you are 8,000 Rand gone in the toilet gone please look after these these cards it's very very important anyway i'm going to pop the card in there it goes remember accept everything there we go and the one that we're going to use for today what i like to use is the satellite just makes it nice and easy we're going to go view photo overlay to full just make sure that there aren't any other categories turned on because what would happen then is you will lose what is happening in in the background if there is any contour data you will lose it so just rather turn it off okay there we go right at this point guys you can now go and girls uh, overlay no before I do that I want to show you what is on the card memory card left what is on there can you see there it is only the the fish tech data only fish tech data even your terms and conditions which nobody ever reads please read that guys otherwise you come crying later and then it's too late please please read this okay so there we go um <clears throat> good now look what happens when i turn on genesis live this is on on the overlay remember there's our, our overlay there i've pushed overlay and i'm clicking on genesis live and we're going to go genesis live options And you can see it's starting to map right remember we are four feet off the dam is down just over 20 feet call it 20.5 the maximum uh, keel adjustment or, or depth offset that we can do is 16.5 feet so we are sort of jimming the system a little bit here but it's important so uh, uh, somewhere write it down that you the dam was down by 20.5 feet and you've made the adjustment of 16.5 okay let's go I'm going to fish all along the shore here and uh, hopefully catch a fish or two and I'll catch up with you guys just now once we've done a section along the dam let's just zoom out so you can see I'm going to head off here in a northerly direction and um, go through some of these coves here and let's Right guys, uh, as you can hear, I've, uh, guys, I'm, I'm just going to pause it there for a sec. Um, the, the, the fishing wasn't too successful, so uh, I thought, let me just, and it was going so slow and it was eating up time. So I thought, let me just put the little motor on and do a little bit of trolling with the with the motor down down the bank just to speed things up a bit um guys if you see anything that you want me to talk about at any point please just um ask uh, just say stop and um uh, ask your your question i'll just simply pause the video and we'll we'll carry on so i'm busy watching your feeds at at the moment uh good evening rowan welcome so yeah let's let's carry on I decided it's just taking too long on the trolling motor and fishing along the bank it'll take forever to show you what I want to show you so I've put a little crankbait out here I've got my little uh, eight horse yummy four stroke going 
So we're going to do a little bit of trawling. Um, uh, right, something I forgot to show you. You can see we did cover quite a bit back there, as you can see. We did quite a bit of a section there. Uh, so we, we want to do all these little bays here. So I'm going to speed it up a little bit with the uh, with a little bit of trailing. Um, but guys, I forgot to show you something. Um, the frequency on the TM150, remember, you need 200 kilohertz for Genesis Live. You don't have 200 kilohertz. So what you need to do is you go into your custom settings and you're going to put in the, the highest frequency that a TM150 one, uh, that a TM150 can handle is look, look if I try and tap in here 200 it, it won't let me so the highest frequency it will give me is 155 kilohertz and that's the frequency that we're going to use so guys just keep that in in mind I forgot to show you earlier uh, whereas with the uh, HDI and the all the other uh, Lorenz type transducers. Uh, Clint, good evening. Uh, thanks for for joining. Uh, Clint just asked a question. He said uh, speed limit with live mapping. Guys, if your transducer is set up um, in line with the planing surface of your boat and not on the step like my uh, a boat is well. I'm talking about my my bass boat, my center console. Um, they say you can comfortably run around up to about 25 kilometers per hour comfortably, and it will map. So, um, but just be careful if you if you're getting bubbles or you've got a chip or something underneath the actual hull, and you get those bubbles running under the transducer, and you're losing contact with the bottom. It's going to create horrible pinnacles and actually ruin your uh, Genesis live chart or in fact any chart that you're creating whether it's uh, adding to uh, your Genesis account for uh, the social map or your private account whatever it might be so guys just before you use any form of Genesis live recording or anything see what your boat can handle if it can do 25 30 k's an hour and it can record nicely without any hassles uh, by all means that's the speed at which you can go up and down the dam and and record and of course you know just be careful if you're on a dam which has got a low level be very very careful that something's not sticking up and you might drive into something and damage the boat so clint uh lens uh, thank you for the question i hope that uh, helped you um let's get back to the show the total scan and all that yes you, you can use um the 200 kilohertz right Right, here's something else uh, that's quite interesting while we're trolling out this little section here. Um, if you use Fish Reveal, your structure and chart, which is that one there, structure and chart, can you notice what has happened? The depth data now all of a sudden is extremely accurate. You know, on the uh, Fish Reveal side. But the chart the genesis live is still compensating for that 16 and a half feet that we put in so guys if you don't want to be off put by the depth just on your sonar view uh, just switch over to down scan and um, use the fish reveal feature the your your depth and your um, everything comes right you, you'll see your structure depth at the top isn't just depth depth it's structure depth so yeah there's another thing that we've just learned together oh i've got a fish on chat later right guys i hope uh those little videos um will give you a guideline as to what to expect from from genesis live i think one of the main things you saw initially was um it started off in a blue to a white uh, palette range and then it turned in, into a color range. Um, I just want to point out quickly that the uh, custom colors, uh, I've been getting a lot of requests for this, uh, asking me how to do it during the week. I even had to um, ask my friend from Italy, uh, Claudio from uh, Fish Finder Passion, um, 
for some assistance here. He's doing some wonderful stuff for, for Lawrence in Europe and on the Mediterranean. Uh, guys, if you're saltwater fishermen and you want to, and, and you're looking at uh, uh, talking to somebody that is on the sea a lot, I know I've been focusing on the bass guys a lot and I've sort of neglected my saltwater fishing, uh, but Guys, please get in contact with Claudio from uh, Fish Finder Passion. Uh, he really is a very, very knowledgeable guy with regard to that. And anyway, um, he, he gave me some tips on how to do this whole color thing and what have you. And um, the, uh, from my experience, I found carbon 100%. It does the job, no hassles whatsoever. With the Gen 3 and the Elite TI, you've only got the standard colors. So let me quickly show you. Um, <clears throat> let me see who's joined us. Monet Duplessis, hello Monet, Andrew Reed, Casey Kenneth, hello Casey, Tim, well beloved, welcome guys, welcome. Um, right, um, the first thing obviously from what, what you saw there, we're going to go to our overlay and we're going to turn our, our Genesis live on. <clears throat> okay, this is the type of thing that you're going to see. Let me zoom out. This was this whole section that I did. From where I started recording, you'll see down there, um, that's where I, I did my first little video, my introduction video on, on what we're going to do. And then I drove sort of all along the shore here, and I covered actually quite a bit of of the dam. And um, yeah, I caught quite a few fish, believe it or not, And uh, but nothing fantastic, nothing worth uh, worthwhile for the photo albums. <clears throat> I was running quite shallow with a very shallow little crankbait, a little DT6, but um, yeah. So, so guys, um, that's basically what I've got from a, a Genesis Live perspective. Now, here was here was the thing. When I went back and looked at it and zoomed in, let's take this section here. Uh, Guys, let me just stop here for a sec. I see Clark's got a question. Uh, Clark, uh, guys, Clark Reem is asking, if you have multiple units linked in a network, are you able to run a Navionics card on one unit side by side with the unit you are using to build your map? Yes, you can, 100%. The minute, the minute you split your screen, um, I just want to see if I, I don't know if we touched on that. I want to have a look here. I'm sure. Yes. Guys, there is another video. I'm actually going to put this video on in lieu of Clark's question. Hopefully so, because it will be a whole lot easier, at least follow along where the resource tells me so I don't waste my time mapping in dead or too deep water. Clark, I'm going to put a video, another video on quickly. Um, this basically answers your question. I was meant to do it earlier and I forgot about it. So guys, here we go. Just watch this. This is talking about running two. You can either do this on two separate finders completely like Clark has, has, has asked, or you can on one unit, especially if you've got a big unit, especially if you've got that beautiful, beautiful carbon 16, then it's like having two 12s on, on board. You can split the screen down the middle. Here, here goes the, the video guys. Guys, there's something else I want to show you. Um, I was thinking, what if you want to have Genesis live, but you want to still fish and see uh, your your charts behind the, the Genesis live? Unfortunately, once you've sort of activated the panel and you've got this Genesis live on like that, um, it's going to be writing on top of your charts. And you're not going to see what's behind there. However, if we hit the pages button, and you create this chart plus chart plus down or structure to create your uh, fish reveal. We're going to make that. That you know, uh, you guys know how to do that. You drag in the the panels, um, and there you have it. Um, you've now got uh, your Genesis live on top of your satellite, for example. Uh, you've got your um, uh, Ultra HF in this case in the middle. Let's swipe that out the way. So we've got bigger panels and there we go. Sorted. Guys, as, uh, as you saw there, um, yes, uh, never mind running separate charts on two separate units. Keep in mind that Genesis Live does not share on the network. 
you cannot like with your fish tech hd charts and your navionics charts put it in one unit i'm talking about hds's now not elite ti's because because the elite ti does not have ethernet so you can't share um but with genesis live even if you do have an hds you cannot share the chart data the genesis live data with another unit you would actually physically have to record for the day take that card you can make a copy of that data on your computer and pop it into the other unit and it will work here's the problem though always have a primary and a slave card your primary must always be the one that you're logging on because if you switch over to your slave and you record to your slave you can't copy that data from the card and add it to the other one because it creates new folders so you've got to be careful of that i don't know if that made sense what i just said now but anyway um guys there's a question uh, uh Arist aristoteles uh Kolios, he says will genesis live be so precise as insight genesis Aristoteles, I'll tell you what, um, I'm, I'm going to show you an example just now. We're actually going to do that. I'm, I was planning on, on showing that just now. So uh, j j just hang in there and I'm going to show you what I'm, what I'm talking about. And I'll show you a comparison between Genesis Live and exactly what you're saying. A recorded Inside Genesis or in my case, my um, Reef Master uh, collected data converted into a chart. But a very, very good question. And just off the bat, I'll tell you, it's very close. It's very close. The thing you've got to watch out for are the edges of your Genesis Live. If you've got multiple passes nice and close together, but not too close together, but close enough, um, it builds actually a, a very nice, accurate chart. But if they are too far apart and they have to start guessing for the outside, because remember, it's doing a swath of 50 meters, believe it or not. That's a huge area but your cone is only seeing a much smaller area that's why you you'll see a single pass like what we've done now on the screen behind me it is very very difficult to use your mapping knowledge to identify channels to identify channels ledges points bars whatever you want to call it so uh, and i'm going to deal with that a little bit more um, let me just see who else has asked a question. Steve Barnett. Good evening, Steve. Uh, are you using the LSS1 structure box 2 or just the LSS1 transducer directly plugged into the carbon? Uh, Steve, um, my boat for this particular application, I had the LSS1, my old LSS1 box still, still connected. Um, <clears throat> It's actually a very good good question that i know we're going a little bit off the chart thing but i want to answer this because it is quite a common question people say you can just take the lss1 and plug it into the carbon and, and what have you but guys let me tell you the magic of the lss1 came from the box it was the combination of the box with the lss1 that gave us that very unique and wonderful 800 kilohertz so if you just plug it straight into your unit unfortunately you're not going to see the magic the old stuff but remember that is not commercially available and <clears throat> yeah but uh i still like the old lss1 800 kilohertz right guys let's get back to what aristoteles asked you about um, how accurate these charts are and what have you let's just break this area down let let's even if we zoom in here and we get more detail if you said to me john where's the point here and where's the ledge and whatnot this single pass the time that it took me to go all the way down down the bank guys i do not believe that it is sufficient information <clears throat> i don't know even where there's quite a bit more let's have a look here where you know the in and out was was quite close guys it's it is a single pass of Genesis Live along the shoreline. I know everybody is hoping that you could um, go fishing like what I did down a shoreline and create this wonderful chart. Guys, unfortunately, that is not the case. That, that does not happen. I want to show you something, <clears throat> what I did. Um, this picture that I'm going to put up now this was done with my little autonomous craft which i've named amy where i put a predetermined area in 
and I put in some uh, gas in the tank and I put a fresh battery in there and I was using a little Elite 5 Ti and I turned Genesis Live on and I did the recording of the sonar and guys this is an area if you look at the actual of acres the the, the acreage covered uh, covered um, on Inanda this was done in a little over six hours six hours and 20 minutes let me tell you in the old days when I started mapping to do that area would have probably taken me about four or five years you know in between fishing doing a little bit of mapping and whatnot I know that sounds excessive but I was more into my fishing than my mapping back then but this would have taken forever but I want to show you what happens if you do do it that way and you do perfect passes remember this is artificial intelligence these things are extremely accurate they they don't get distracted by their cell phones or what or on a phone call or whatnot they follow a path and they do it perfectly let me just <clears throat> i'm hoping this loads up so yeah that area there i'm going to try and show you that area um we're going to go to here we're going to turn on genesis live and that okay uh, there we go now what i was hoping what what you saw earlier um guys if you want to uh while i'm here if you want to put a satellite image behind your your dam that you've um uh, recorded with with genesis live guys it's actually quite easy um there's a wonderful video on youtube it was done by hummingbird guru our friend alan baker on how to do lawrence charts um i don't know i think he was thinking he was trying to stab me with that video but i tell you it's a wonderful video and it teaches everybody how to do it so i actually i'm very grateful to him for actually doing that but what you do is you use um <clears throat> sas planet follow the video the instructions and you use the imc the inside map creator and you download the satellite imagery that you like um, and then you pop it in here and you go <clears throat> should be on there we go there it is okay can you see that now right now look how nice this is if i look at this area here from a distance it's just a jumble of contours it doesn't make any sense but when i zoom in <clears throat> while that's busy loading let me read you robbie olafia joined good evening robbie Stephen lennell hume good evening uh is bart uh lee nish says i hope i pronounced that correctly good evening lee uh he says does it record in down scan only or can you use side scan to cover more ground Lee, uh, if you want to use side scan, uh, the Lawrence's way back from Gen 2 button units, believe it or not, had structure map. Now, structure map uses your full side scan swath and creates a side scan uh, mosaic on top of your actual charts. But uh, you cannot use, it'll be when you go to overlay, if we go back here, you see where we got overlay? You're going to choose either Genesis Live heat map or structure map you cannot put both on or two at the same time you can only apply one at a time now guys we're going to go back to uh aristoteles's uh question about will genesis live be so precise as inside genesis i can tell you now this area here you see where it gets up to about 20 feet that is actually quite accurate it's reasonably accurate um <clears throat> from this 26 foot range going out it's actually very very good from there coming into the shore it's starting to do a lot of guessing because remember the genesis live they've created a very large area 50 meters of coverage around you to try and create maps quickly but the downside to that is the loss of accuracy but the minute we get out here into the 26 foot range where um where was that picture let's put that up again you see how neat those those passes were and how close they were it was perfect perfect passes that's how you get the good good detailed information now here's something interesting 
I tried to, um, when I went fishing, I used a different card, the card that I had in just now, you'll notice I changed it. And I, what I was hoping to do is take that data, which I had on my carbon, and copy the Genesis Live information from my card onto my Elite TI card, and hopefully they would work together to fill in all those little bays. You see those bays that are all blank there without any contours? I was hoping that that would fill that. Guys, it doesn't work. Remember what I said earlier? I said you must have a primary and a slave card. Your primary card is your mapping card. Let's say your buddy says, hey, Harry, can I go and do some mapping for you? I see your, your chart hasn't got this area down at Durban Bay or whatever it might be. You say to him, 100%, make a copy of your card, copy it onto his card. That is now also his primary card. Let him go and record that data on that, which is still now the primary card. I hope this makes sense. Stop me if it doesn't make sense. Get that card back from him when he's recorded that bay and re-save that data onto your primary card, always making a backup, of course. Now you can share data that way. Unfortunately, without the primary card's data and folders, you can't take a new Genesis Live primary and join it with another primary and hopefully they would come together. It doesn't work, unfortunately. Um, it's who? Hey, Paddy, how are you doing? Good evening. Your Elite TI is on the shelf and ready to go. So give me a shout when you're ready. Uh, Clark Reem says, how wide were your passes from the prior pass? Um, Clark, when I went down, down the bank, I obviously was just a single pass. I, I was fishing. I was trying to fish and map at the same time. Uh, so that was just a single pass. However, on the little boat that did the autonomous mapping, I set those passes to 35 meters. In hindsight, I would probably, I would probably make that a little bit less. I think I would have got better accuracy if I reduced those passes to 25 meters each. Um, but that's just being nitty picky. Um, as you can see from, from this chart here, it was actually sufficient. But guys, I just want to also show you while, while we're here. Um, under Genesis Live Options, <coughs> excuse me, I find this uh, default palette, this, the, this color uh, uh, palette here. Uh, let me just see what was the coverage area on each pass. Clark, each pass is 50 meters. So you've got 25 meters, 25 meters to, to either side. That is your, your coverage area for Genesis Live. Um, but I feel it's too much. I know what they're trying to do. They're trying to cover the map quickly. So it looks like you've got maps everywhere. But um, it's, it's it, there's too much guessing by the time you get out there. Because remember, you're only dealing, like I'm, I'm using a, a P66 transducer here uh, on my little boat, my, my little autonomous boat. That's only got a, a 200 kilohertz a cone of nine degrees. And if you're in 20 feet of water, nine, degree, nine degrees is uh, seven feet. You know, you only got a seven foot, cav you, you know, two meter coverage there. So there, there's a lot of guessing happening, if, if you get what I mean. But guys, back to this, um, uh, Clark says, does that fluctuate by depth? No, no. Um, doesn't matter how deep you are, that 50 meter range, that blue dot that you initially saw when the video started, that 50 meter range is always going to be the same, whether you're in one feet of water or you're in 500 feet of water. And that's where this whole guessy, guessy thing becomes a little bit of a problem. But uh, it's still a fantastic tool, as you'll see here. Guys, I was talking about the palettes, these color palettes. This is the default um, color palette for Genesis Live. Dark blue is shallow, white is deep. Now I know charts work like that. Uh, let's just have a look at your paper, your typical paper chart. Um, pretty much the same sort of deal. It's difficult. For those of you who come from the old Dr. Depth days or you've been using a hummingbird with the auto chart live, I'm pretty sure that you would have got to like those custom colors. 
and I've preset custom colors and look what happens to the chart when you make custom colors and you can make those colors whatever you want but this is a format that I used to use on Dr. Depth and I popped it into here I customized it and hopefully it works there we go okay can you see that dark blue is deep red is shallow that just makes life so much easier let's just zoom in there we go now guys from this here from this shallow water you see where my cursor is now i wouldn't trust that i'd find it very difficult to trust that data from there let's actually measure that let's let, let's measure how much is usable and what i feel isn't so we're going to reset to cursor we'll drag that down to there it's 200 feet that inside 200 feet or 70 meters or, or whatever there's too much guessing going on there i wouldn't really trust that but let's say um, you went with your boat really really shallow and whatnot it'll sort that out it will definitely fix that remember my little craft when it created this chart here i kept it well away from the side i don't want that thing running into trees and weeds and rocks and who knows what I try to keep it far away from there so you'll see that's sort of my barrier where I try to stay away from the shore and you can see how low Inanda is at the moment so let's let's cancel that let me just see <clears throat> right no that's that that's going well okay so how does this data I mean how, yeah how does this data compare now to um, my fish check HD charts. Well, let's have a look. Sure. That was close. One left. These things have been selling like popcorn on a corner. Right. Let's pop that in there and let's see. Let's do a rough comparison. I'm going to put that as dead center screen there. Try and sort of get a mental note of that. We're going to say yes, yes, yes. We're going to load all the charts. Just remember, guys, every time you put a fish tech chart into your fish finder and you say yes, 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 it's like adding a brand new chart. So the first thing we're going to do then is we're going to go to our chart options. We're going to go to contours because we want to see the contours. But look what has happened now. Genesis Live, even though it is vector data, it's an overlay. So now the vector overlay data is sitting on top of my fish tech chart the contour charts so to turn that off we just go to overlay and we say off there it is there now this is what clark asked earlier how no sorry it was um aristoteles sorry i should have remembered that aristoteles um, he asked, you know, how does it compare? Now, this data that you're seeing now, this is a chart that I sell, and I know it is quite accurate. Let's compare it to, uh, okay, let's let's turn the, you, you can see there's a little bit of a hump there. There's, of course, a very prominent little bar going out there. There's a bar over there. There's a bar over there. Let's see if this picks up this bar. I know it picks up that one. I, I, I can remember seeing that earlier but let's see if it picks up that little one there so we're going to go to overlay genesis live look at that it does pick it up it's right on the very edge of what we said was safe live data but guys it picked it up it picked it up but look at the difference in depth genesis live is telling me it's 15.5 feet there i turn that off But it's actually 33 feet why did it do that i did not do a depth compensation because of the low level of inanda dam remember all my fish tech charts even if i've recorded data when the dam was down i've calculated exactly by how many feet is the dam down and i've made that that correction so if you take that difference there between what we're getting on the genesis live to the 33 uh when the dam is 100 percent uh full it's perfect it's working spot on the way it should if I'd compensated on my autonomous craft on the little elite uh, 5ti that it has in it 
um, uh, I, I would have been able to correct it to a maximum of 16.5 feet. I would have still been four feet short because it's essentially 20 feet out. But remember, you're getting to the edge of the Genesis Live and it gets a little bit inaccurate on the edge there. Um, let me see if there's any more questions. Steve Phillips, hello. Shane Redman, good evening, Shane. Uh, can you do the same type of scans by using a TI total scan transducer? 100%, yes. Um, any of the Lorenz transducers works with, with this. In fact, it's a lot easier using the Lorenz transducers. Your HST, WSBL, your HDI, your total scan, um, yeah, works 100%. Plus, remember, if you're using a TI or you're using an HDS Gen 3 or Carbon, you've got fish reveal like I showed you just now. So you can still fish and see depth and structure at the actual depth that it is, but the offset that you did on your depth will correct it for your Genesis Live up to a maximum of 16.5 feet. If the dam's down by more than 16.5 feet, sorry for you, unfortunately. But yeah, so so guys, this comparison I'm very, very happy with. I think, I think Genesis Live is doing a phenomenal job here. But here's the thing behind it. That one pass, if you can't say, let's go fishing for the day, and while we're fishing, we're going to map. If you could layer it, and force yourself to stay let's say 20 do the one bank first then you've left a trail there stay let's say 25 to 30 meters behind the other one don't get over the other one too much and then fish it means you're gonna have to cast further to the shore or whatever and you do let's say three lines i believe at three lines you'll start to get usable data but remember anything that's happening right on the shoreline is a a product of what happened deeper and guys this is where this comes in this is what I use Amy for artificial intelligence mapping she's a little 3.2 meter craft with a two and a half horsepower mercury four stroke she runs six 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 hours 20 on I think she used seven liters of fuel she does all the dirty work in the middle of of the dam you go fishing let the autonomous craft do the rest Let's bring this back here okay right so here's another thing you can overlay uh this genesis live on top of any of of the charts so let's say we oh no i took that out so let's stay here i took that out you can go to the chart options. Let's say we change that to um, mosaic. We'll go back. We'll go to view. Turn the photo overlay to full. We'll go to the categories. We'll turn them all off. Remember, if you want to put in custom categories and custom depths and all that type of thing, be my guest. Um, watch my last show. Uh, that was episode seven. I know this one's labeled as episode seven. It was a mistake when I when I put it together. But um, yeah, so, so what you can do now, you go back and you go to your overlay data and you can turn your Genesis Live on and there we go. Bang, it's on top there. What you can also do under your options is um, you can turn on your transparency if you want to. If you want to see what's happening behind. Uh, that doesn't work very well. It's the first time that I've actually tried that. I'm glad that we did do that. Yeah, I know, that, that didn't work well at all. Okay, so we won't be using, using Genesis Live Transparency. That definitely doesn't, doesn't do anything for us. I was hoping that we'd get a transparency, we could see the charts behind it, but it obviously doesn't do that. The contour interval, if it gets too busy, you can turn it down to medium. Or low and you can see what it's doing there it's giving uh, uh, intervals in this case now 18 to 24 is that that's a six foot uh, interval difference what was it 24 I can't see the next one 24 yeah it's roughly around there call it six foot between there um, just so that it unclutters it's it, it slightly so 
from a Genesis Live perspective, I think that's about it, guys. Um, you know, while I've been talking, I've been thinking, geez, I wish I did a couple of other things to show you. But I think we've roughly covered what, what you need to know. I will be submitting this on um, YouTube. So you could go to this and break it down and just watch that section where we talk about uh, your primary and your slave card, that is going to become important, especially if you're working with someone else or multiple units or multiple craft or whatever. Uh, just go back and rewind to that part of the video where I talk about primary and slave. Um, right, guys, um, how are we doing time-wise? 1948, no, we're looking good, we're looking good. I want to talk about, we are, okay, we are done with Genesis Live. Anybody got any more questions? Uh, good evening, Mike Ross Macy. Hi, or Ross Maisel. Good evening. How are you doing? Barry Londa. Hey, Barry. Um, yeah, that looks great. Guys, it's time to see what happened with the 360. Let's put this on this 360. I'm going to merge that into there. We're going to restart. I'm just going to pause that quickly right as many of you know i have been talking about the 360 you all know i'm die hard lawrence person but um i've been spending time with this uh, 360 unit and i've heard you know over the years i obviously had one right in the beginning which i tried it was a disaster and then they uh, made some changes and then out they brought out the uh, 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 trolling motor mount, which worked great, um, which was a much better thing than the transom. And geez, man, I've heard so many stories. And what I've done is whenever anyone's told a story about what the 360 can do, I've tried to go out and replicate that and see what's fact and what's fiction. And I can tell you the fiction part of 360. Yo, that's a big club, eh? Yeah, the Oaks. I don't know if they've got a Sangorma in their boat that throws the bones and gives them some information on it. But I don't have a Sangorma. I don't have a place on my boat for a Sangorma. Uh, no. These stories of, I saw down there in the distance two two kilo bass moving next to the weeds. Th yeah, this was in Nationals at Riggles Way from a very well-known angler. Yo, let me tell you, that's a hoho story, that yo. Um, MH Brothers, good evening. So we can update a Navionics map or create our own map. If it's our own map, can we do that on the HDS Gen 3 or tablet or the model? Um, MH Brothers, welcome, good evening. Yo, that's a broad, you, you've actually asked a lot there. Um, Yes, you can update the, the Navionics chart, which has its limitations. It's primarily a vector chart. The, it's, it's contour data, depending on your area where you are in the world. I haven't been able to check where you're from. Uh, some areas are quite good, some are not. Some areas are very good in the deeper water. And then when you get into the backwaters where you're fishing, the quality is poor. So that's something that you need, need to look at. And uh, where you are lacking in data this is where your genesis live your de your genesis uh your cmap genesis uh account or your free social map look into those type of things to improve that or alternatively take a big stance learn um get uh things like reef master or uh, use the insight map creator with reef master and create your your own charts it really does work well like i said earlier you can put satellite imagery in there you can put old chart paper that you've uh, digitized and um, uh, geo-referenced and put that behind your your contour data so there's a, a lot that you can do there and it's something that we've covered over the years so if you want to contact me later um, uh, well maybe not tonight but during the week and just drop me a question and let's handle one thing at a time and get you on your way i'll send you links and what have you uh, I hope that that helps. Uh, Steve Barnett says, is there uh, something in the works for using Genesis live data to use on the social map or insight map creator? Steve, uh, I think I've, I've read your, your question right. But basically what you're going to do is your Genesis live data 
is really just there for you on the day you've you're going to a dam where you don't have a fish tech chart or you don't have a good navionics chart or you don't have a good uh cmap genesis social chart there's something missing it's not great you need more information this is where your genesis live is going to kick in you've got a chart right then and there on your boat but don't forget to record that data so go into sonar advanced log change it to an slg preferably it makes a smaller file and record that data when you get home you can upload it to your Gen your cmap genesis account or put it into your uh, reef master uh, project for that body of water and create your your own charts so yeah um, there are a number of options do not just depend on genesis live genesis live it's only gen you can't convert genesis live to anything else later it's it's a quick fix for on the water i should have actually mentioned that much earlier in the program uh so steve barnett thanks very much for for bringing that up that was very this this is what i love about uh doing a live show like this if it was just a video you know just a recording of a video and i put it up on youtube and it's done there's no interaction I leave very important things out like what steve has brought up like what everyone's brought up up this evening clark ream everybody absolutely wonderful i really appreciate it guys we've had a fantastic evening too uh this evening you guys have been truly tremendous um, um yeah back to my little story about the 360. now i'm going to show you the video quickly i think i explained everything about the video it's basically a follow-up on what happened at the flw and uh, I spoke to one of my pro staff, Robbie Olafier, and I was hoping when I said, Robbie, um, how was it? He obviously won it. Him and his partner won the FLW South Africa. They're going to the States later in the year. Congratulations, Robbie and your partner. Very, very well done, guys. Um, but I was hoping when I asked him, and what was the secret? How were my charts? And he said, John, if the fish were doing what they were supposed to do, your charts would have been fantastic. But unfortunately, it was a different ball game and anybody that was at Bavon at the FLW final will tell you it was the exact opposite of what Albert Falls was this last weekend. Albert Falls was on fire. Uh, Clark, uh, pleasure Clark, no problem. I look forward to you joining us. Please stay in contact. I really appreciate your contribution and good luck with your, with your season. Um, let me show you this video quickly. Guys, I want to show you something. Um, I believe I got some information regarding Bavon. Uh, my pro staff, uh, Robbie Elofier, um, him and his partner, they won the FLW and they will be going to the States later this year. Um, I had a chat with Robbie and I said to him, what was the number one thing um, that changed things for you on the day when you were fishing and he said to me John it was the 360 they went 60 feet of water on a very steep cliff face and there were they found some timber on the um, face and they just targeted that face with very light line took their time and yeah the results were there now guys I want to show you something the water here is very clean and this one is obviously uh, quite a bit shallower but this is a very similar type of scenario that Rob and his partner were using you see that standing timber over there in the center of, of the screen now Bavon is very dirty apparently I hope I've got that correct um, and obviously uh, in that water you would not see a stump okay this one's a lot closer to the surface but what I want to do is, I want to put myself in close proximity to where I, where I presume they were from what I could get from that conversation. And w could, could you actually see this on the 360? So let's have a look at this. Right. Guys, we've 
So basically what we're doing is we're simulating exactly what Robbie and them were seeing on their finder on their 360 when they were on the van. And I have to say, down there, you see there? There's that stump. Can you see it there? Let's see if I can try and get rid of some of the the glare. Now that to me from what I could gather from that conversation is what made the difference on their day. Were the should, if those fish were up on the sh on the flats and uh, where they should have been for the spawn, um, yes, definitely. Like Robbie says, the fish tech charts would have played a massive role. But up against the cliff like this, as you guys know, side scan is not fantastic for up against the cliff like this. But guys, there is that stump. There's that standing timber there. You see it there? And you know what? I think we have to accept that there is a place and a time for this 360 and it will make a difference. At some point I'd like to get my hands on that Pan Optics live scope. I have tried the Pan Optics, the normal Pan Optics, not impressed. I don't need a, a fish finder to tell me, well done John, you've caught a fish. No, no, no. I need a fish finder to tell me where the fish are before I cast the line. So, um, Panoptics live scope, we'll be testing that as soon as uh, one comes available. And uh, guys, yeah, let's. This, this 360, there's definitely a place for it on, on your boat. And of course, you know, it is a casting guide. It's telling us it's at the, about half past six, seven o'clock position. If we were on our trailing motor, let's just see how accurate that is. There's our 12 o'clock position up ahead there. Guys, I've just stopped the, the video there. I think you get the idea. Um, there are unique uh, situations where this 360 thing does work. Um, it's certainly not a do-all. It's extremely blurry and hard to read. And yeah, But once you can, can learn to identify those small things, and of course it's real time, so accuracy and bearing and direction, it's certainly going to help you. Just a quick mention here with regard to what Robbie was was fishing. Don't forget on your um, FishTech HD charts, if you end up in a situation like this here, don't forget about the georeferenced images of stuff that was there when the dam was down. A photograph like this, when the dam is 100% full, will tell you exactly where that where that timber is. You can sort of, you know, um, if if the if the dam was, was full, you could click on that uh, 1472, for example, hit the go to your XI5 trolling motor is going to take you exactly there to that location, that exact spot where the photograph was taken. You're going to click image, and there it is there. Let's see if there's another angle on it by any chance. Like these were taken at all different. Ah, there we go. There we go. You see little bits of information like like this. Um, don't forget about these little hidden treasures or little tools on our fish tech charts. So just keep that in mind. Um, guys, from my side, let me put this here. Here. Merge. Guys, that's it for the how are we doing time wise? Okay, I'm I'm a minute over. It's one minute past eight. That's not not too bad. Guys, uh please if you feel that I've missed anything um or I didn't touch on on anything, please let, let me know. Um for all of you guys that participated tonight and asked questions, you made the show extremely interesting. Well for me at least. Um but I suppose that's a biased opinion. But uh, yeah, guys, really, thank you very, very much. Um, let's see what we come up with uh, next month. Um, as most of you know, I've been very busy with my project named Amy, my artificial intelligence mapping craft. Um, that has been taking up a lot of my time. And it's certainly going to be something 
wonderful that I believe is going to play a big part in mapping around the world. Um, I'm already currently sitting on a couple of international orders for it. And yeah, I think this is going to be the way we're going to map in, in future. Uh, we want to go fishing. Even me as a cartographer, I also want to go fishing a little bit. I would like it if something else can do it and do it better than what I do it. For this, for that type of application, you cannot beat uh, artificial intelligence. Um, so everybody that participated, once again, thank you very much. And I look forward to seeing all of you and more at next month. Remember, it's the second Tuesday of every month at uh, 1900 hours or 7 o'clock uh, Central Africa time. Good evening, everybody. See you next time.